Hey, how's it going everyone? Just back in with another um, lesson. This is a bit of a free form one, but um, was inspired by a comment that somebody made on my live stream yesterday about baptism. And um, my response was, uh, you know, there's there's no point, you know, in the times that we live in now because the entire earth is defiled and then filled with, you know, evil people. And it's just very, very difficult to discern, you know, who is righteous um, enough to perform that type of and and uh and act you know which is sacred you know and certainly not the people on youtube definitely not okay absolutely not and so but i wanted to um and then it, my answer was potentially if you had access to the people in arzareth you know that i'm reading of that i've read recently a couple times in second ezra 13 where they made a distant journey of a year and a half um away from their captivity to get away from you know their people hold, holding them captive not allowing them to keep God's statutes in 2nd Ezra 13. And so that group uh, guaranteed there's one person there at least uh, who would be more than worthy to perform a baptism, you know, for, for an individual or for their child or something like that, uh, without a doubt, you know, because um, absolutely they're Israelites and, uh, you know, they, they, would, they would be practicing the law. And um, they are people that were led there to that place with God you know, above helping them, um, clearing the waters and, you know, feeding them and all that. So without a doubt, you know, these are, these are the quote unquote chosen. And so, uh, that was my answer, but they're in a land that on purpose, that is so far away that they cannot be accessed and God wanted them to be isolated. So no one can come, you know, and interrupt what they're doing, which is to honor God's laws. And so, um, that's, uh, that's the times that we live in now, but I want people to know that, what we understand now when we take a step back, watching the Bible, you know, narrative that we have documented, and even what we see happening now, but it's the reciprocal, is that the goal, the, goal, the ideal situation was God to have a chosen people, okay? And then in a particular land. And then they would be a righteous people, a holy people. And um, they would be performing God's laws and um, honoring them to the T. And then anybody that would come foreign to them they would be essentially indoctrinated with that way of life and uh you know they would have no choice if they wanted to remain there or they would be discarded like there was no um negotiation it's this ecosystem governed by these laws if you accept them you can stay and then if you don't we'll reject you and so that's what God wanted from the beginning. He did not want any any mixing or diluting of the law of um, in a harmonious ecosystem, you know, of his of his people, his chosen people. And so uh, God could then know with at minimum that amount of righteousness would remain. And ideally for God, which we also see in the Bible, is that that uh, glory would expand. And so then people from potentially other nations or maybe even Israelites who are in distant lands would then come to that group who are honoring the law faithfully. And then they would be essentially indoctrinated into continuing that and then expanding God's glory. Because the more people that are honoring God's laws on earth, it uh, pleases God. And that's what is going to happen in the kingdom. And so it would be a form of the kingdom happening already on earth. And then the more people that do it, it essentially expands God's territory on his own earth and essentially squeezes out the evil. So that's the ideal situation, scenario, that God wanted is his law to essentially be a form of indoctrination to people uh, when they come across an Israelite. And so, and there was no two ways about it. It's either you accept it or you get removed. And so that's the ideal situation. I'm going to tie that to Revelation 4.11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Who is he going to receive glory from? His people. Okay. So the more people on earth that give God glory, um, that's, what, that's ultimately what God wants. And so that's ultimately going to happen without a doubt in the kingdom. But um, this is very, very important. And so one aspect of God receiving glory is from us. And the more the people that honor God's laws, it expands God's glory on earth. And so that's an amazing thing. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. And so this is a, 
very important to understand that that's ideally what God wanted. What has happened and what we've seen, except for that group, the nine tribes who um, left that captivity under the Assyrian king, uh, a majority of the other groups of Israelites have then diluted God's laws. And so they would invite somebody in potentially, or a foreign nation would come, even one person or, or 10 or 100. And then over time, they would be like, oh, I don't really feel like doing that. You know, why do you guys do this? And like, eh, so we can, it's faster to do this, or, you know, I'm tired today or whatever. Like, oh, you know, we do this over there. And then, you know, it would slowly get diluted and maybe not even slowly, maybe quickly. And so then um, God's glory gets diminished amongst that group. And then what happens is that the honor gets diminished and so does his power amongst that ecosystem. And then those Israelites then are subject to God's laws being removed. And then you're at the mercy of those other nations. And then they may even lead people to a different land. Oh, you know, I have cousins over here and, you know, oh, the food's really great over there. And then certain Israelites will go and follow those people. And then the honor and power gets diminished. And so, and then once God's um, honor and power get diminished, his law gets diminished on earth. And then ultimately now we see it's, it's essentially gone except for the, that group, and then those that are speckled throughout the earth in, in small numbers in different pockets that are honoring God's laws. And so it, it's lost its power. And so uh, because it's either diminished completely or it's been spread. And so that's the world that we live in now. And so that's why the world is in the place that it's in right now, without a doubt, because uh, we have lost um, a core nucleus of Israelites who are honoring God's laws and then expanding God's glory. That's stopped. It, it's shrunk to essentially nothing because the one group that we know for a fact is, and still is right now, they're in a distant land. And the reason why they're in a distant land is because God knows that if any person comes to that group who's not an Israelite or even an Israelite, they will disrupt that ecosystem. And God does not want that because he needs his uh, glory and honor and power represented somewhere on earth. And so just know that that's what we're, that's the world that we live in now. That's why the world is completely lawless. And uh, this is why uh, God has, has, to, has to intervene because only he can then recombine the Israelites and then put them in a place in their, in their land that was promised to them and then put the law on their, in their heart, in their mind. So they have to perform the law because not performing the law is what got them spread, you know, and then wandering, you know, and all that. And then ultimately for the group that went into slavery, it's the same reason. Ultimately, all of this is a function of a result of a group in the past, not honoring God's laws. And then he lets them go at, at you know, whatever happens. So if they get led away by other nations or um, God puts them, you know, under the rulership of those other nations and if, if you don't want to honor god's laws god's like sure go ahead <laughs> see what let's see what happens to you and um that's the world that we live in now and so god's glory honor and power uh have been diminished not to zero because there's always a group that will honor god's laws and that's the group in Arzareth in the middle east and then in the last days they get rewards for their faithfulness because they made a very very long arduous journey and they're, they're, they're living by themselves. You know, it's not like they're missing out on the nonsense that we have here, but, uh, you know, they're going to get rewarded for maintaining the law, essentially heaven on earth, even if it's in a very, very small group, very, very small region, distant land. And so the, the kingdom is going to obviously be incredible for them, but it's, it's not going to be as different to them as it is for us who live in Babylon or live in, you know, other parts of the beast network, which is completely opposite, contrary to honoring God's laws. So just know that uh, that's w what God wanted in an ideal sense. Well, obviously this is all planned, you know, this whole entire movie, this whole narrative, but just know that that's ultimately what God wants is the Israelites to essentially be a group to indoctrinate the masses into God's laws. This is a good form of indoctrination. Not all indoctrination is bad, okay? <clears throat> uh, being indoctrinated to flat earth is a good thing because it's the truth. Uh, even if we don't like it or whatever, you know, we were like, oh man, like that's what it is. So we have to understand it. And so um, God's people, the Israelites, essentially were supposed to be the group that indoctrinated the entire world, baptized them, is another way of thinking about it, into the laws of God. And then making it so they just function and then they're a part of it. And then we don't even tell the difference really when we look down on that 
because it's all healthy and they're all doing it. And even if they're not a quote natural Israelite, they would be grafted into that economy and then they would share some of the benefits, not as much obviously as the Israelites, because they're the ones who it was given to first. And then they would be credited for their leadership because they're the ones who are orchestrating that and making sure that it does not stop under no circumstances. Even if people have to be purged, it doesn't matter, get rid of them, that kind of thing. So um, they're the overseers <clears throat> and that will never be the never change because they would never put a non-Israelite in charge because then they know exactly what's gonna happen like tomorrow. So they will always get the, the first fruit. They are always the first fruits and they will get the first fruits in terms of rewards. And so that's what God wanted. So, and contrast that with the world that we live in, what does, uh, in America, for example, has an indoctrination system with their education system, their money system, political system and all that. So you have to go through all these hoops and hurdles in order to be quote ready to be used by this system in, in the corporate world or in the political world or whatever uh, world you function in, maybe both. And they're all the same now, we know that. But um, this world has its own form of indoctrination into its laws. So you can, you know, keep the, the wheels moving. And so now if me and a few people that come by here, we've hopped off that wheel and not just hopped off and we're sprinting as far away from humanly possible as we can go mentally, of course, and if we need to physically. And uh, that's, uh, that's where we're at. And so we, we run to, to God. And, and his laws, you know, and the Bible, ultimately the word of God and his people. And we spiritually align with them because uh, we've jumped off the, you know, the, the, the wheel, okay, um, the hamster wheel. And because we know that it's not moving. <laughs> it's like, we're running really fast, but we haven't moved at all. And then that's exactly what it is. And in fact, what's actually happening, if a person stays on it is they're going backwards, they're going away from God, actually. So we've jumped off and then we go in the other direction. And so, that's uh, that's metaphorically what we're doing. And so just know that God's left-hand side has the same form of indoctrination, induction into like their principles. And um, anybody with a functioning brain would know that this is not a good place to be. There's nothing to do here that's productive and, and righteous and anything like that. And so it's, it's not even like a tough decision at all. For me personally, it's, it's not even a decision. It's obvious because this place is so stupid. And, uh, all really our only hope is to align ourselves spiritually wherever the, the Israelites are worldwide with them so we can be recombined and then do what God wanted from the beginning, which is his laws to be honored in a place so then God can visit. That's the key thing. When God's laws are honored, even if it's with one person or two people or three people or 100 people or 144,000, when they're honored, you know, and you have a good system moving, functioning, lubricated by God's laws, God can then visit because it's clean. And then he can say, oh, okay, well, I feel comfortable here. I feel safe here. First and foremost, that you, you people are not going to kill me, which is what his people did in, in the past. And then in the last days, they've recruited essentially the entire earth. And so it got, no, obviously God feels safe everywhere. Because like, like I read here in Revelation 4.11, he's behind all of this, but I'm speaking um, from an earthly perspective, then God can visit and feel safe and then give them even more things to do, more insight, more wisdom, more knowledge and all that. So that's that's what's going on you know and we see that it's just it's not even like hard to piece that together that's exactly what we see going on in the world because the israelites are uh clearly on earth they have to be or else the bible is not true because they're sealed in the last days and so uh and the bible says that they're going to be spread throughout the entire earth and so their power is still there but it's diminished because it's they're in pockets individuals ones twos families and that kind of thing so um they're not able to get together and then expand God's glory unless God recombines them and then puts the law in their mind. And then anybody that cleaves onto that group, like it's described in, in the kingdom, they have no choice but to accept those laws. And if they don't, then they won't be there because the righteousness of everybody in the kingdom has to be at least the scribes and the Pharisees. So they will not be hypocrites or be people who will try and make, you know, stories and allegations to try and trap God and his people. And so they will, by definition, be accepting of those laws because God's laws are eternal. They're not going to stop, push pause or anything like that. That's not the way it works. He didn't like come up with some ideas and be like, man, nah, whatever. Nah, that's, that's too strict. That's too strict. Let me kind of chill out with these or whatever. Um, Christ even says anybody who relaxes any one of these will be called least, you know, so it's not about that. That's not what God wants. It's those who teach and do them that are going to be great in the kingdom. And those are his elect. And so, and that's obviously the group reflective in, uh, in Arzareth because they're doing it. 
and they don't care how far they had to go to do it because they need to do it because only with the law do you have life and only with life um, can God join because Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And so that's when God can visit them and um, minister to them and help them and feed them and, and not just physically like food, but like spiritually and all that. So that's ultimately what uh, the plan was. It didn't happen by God's will, of course, but the recombining is God's will and then it is going to happen in the kingdom where Christ is going to be ruling and with his elect who are all Israelites and uh, they're not going to take a break from the law. No, nope, sorry, oh, it's so fine. Take five minute break or whatever. I don't care what nation you're from. You can just take it, relax. No, it's going to be 24 seven all the time. And um, then we're going to see what a healthy functioning economy looks like. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.